Hello, Server Nation, and welcome back to Process Server Daily. I'm your host, Mighty Mike, and I want to personally thank you for listening to my show. As a process server, I know how difficult it can be to find the right resource just when you need them. I've developed a solution. ServerNation.us is a website that my sons and I built specifically with you in mind. Find a server, find a court, or simply find the right out-of-state affidavit. Don't forget to enter your contact details so you can be found to ServerNation.us, the number one resource for legal support professionals. We're here today with our guest, a professional process server for over 30 years. Uh, he's been elected as our newest 2017 president of NAPS and is a proud longtime member of the California Association of Legal Support Professionals. He's here to rock the mic today and to get us going and to drop some major value bombs. I'm super excited to be able to have him on. How's it going, Mike? Doing great. How are you doing? Doing, doing awesome. Doing awesome. So this is the first episode, so guys, be prepared for a few mistakes from yours truly uh, this is all about mike here we're interviewing mike most of us know him and know his awesomeness and so we're going to go ahead and get started mike i just want to know how did you get started in the industry well i got it i got involved in since a young man growing up in this business i'm a second generation process server my father started in the, in the uh processing business back in the early 60s and then when I was going through high school and as I was going through elementary high school and so forth I would work all the summer jobs for my father originally I did not want to go into being a processor I wanted to be a police officer oh wow my father told me oh you're gonna get shot at this and that you don't really want to do that be a processor you can make a lot more money you don't have the stress and you don't have people shooting at you <laughs> well I don't know if that's all true because sometimes we still have that kind of rough uh, situations at time where you got people that don't like you, they're not happy about what you're bringing to them, and uh, you know you gotta you gotta make sure you really keep your guard up at times. You know, gotta be smart. That's true. You gotta do do what you gotta do, and there's a lot of different a lot of different programs and things that help uh, help process servers learn. Uh, I know you're one of the leaders. CalSpro um, teaches a lot about uh, process server safety and things like that. Isn't there a yeah. special program with them? Yeah, well, they have a they have a we have a program called CCPS, which is the California Certified Process Server Program, and we hold workshops anywhere from four to ten a year, different parts of the state of California training process servers on laws, codes, public safety, how to make sure you you know don't do something. You got to use basically common sense mm-hmm. and basically teach them the proper way to serve papers. Yeah, I've attended a few classes, and I'm definitely a better server for it. So, well, speaking of those uh, kind of rough experiences that we might have out in the field, um, tell me about the worst experience you've had in the field. Well, the worst experience I had was in 1988. I had to serve some divorce documents on a guy that owned an exterminating company. And I've had a couple of different assaults, but this one sticks in my mind because it actually put me in the hospital. Oh, my gosh. I went to 1988. I served the guy divorce papers, knocked on the door. Guy answered the door, said it was him. No problem. Took the papers from me, turned around and started walking my car. And all of a sudden, I got hit in the back of the head, knocked out unconscious. And uh, don't remember a thing after this, waking up in a hospital. And how it was all seen is the lady across the street, the neighbor saw it all from her window, saw him hit me with some kind of bat and cracked me in the back corner of my head. Knocked me unconscious. Oh. Took my car that was running in the driveway or partially in the driveway, partially on the street, and went down, took my car and drove it down the street and parked my car and came back up the street. I'm still laying unconscious and ran back in the house and closed the door. Neighbor called the sheriff. Sheriff showed up at the house. Of course, she told him what happened and they arrested him first, first degree. And they originally had charged him with attempted murder. How old, how old did you say you were? I was 19. Oh wow, yeah. fresh. Uh, cracked in the back of my head. Oh, it was it was pretty bad. That's um, terrible. It, but it ensued later on. It got a little worse later on. So they charged him. He had to go to he had to go to jail. He went to prison. Oh my gosh. Uh, I collected from his homeowner's insurance quite heavily. Uh, believe it or not, when he got out of prison several years later, I saw the same man in Baskin and Robbins. Several <laughs> years later. 
Yeah, he knew exactly who I was, never said a word again. I learned not to ever turn my back on somebody. You know, you learn that at an early age. Of course, I had to pay a price for it. I got ahead to get hurt to find that out. Well, I tell you, Mike, I haven't had an experience that bad uh, yet, but um, I've had situations where I heard footsteps coming up behind me, and I really thought for a second, like, is this guy, could this guy, you know, do... So I'm glad that you shared that story with us because that's something that, you know, you you, you always want to watch them. And don't right. underestimate people either, guy or girl. You never know what you're going to get. Well, so. you know, and that's that's another thing, you know, I always try to tell people that, you know, you gotta you got to be prepared for anything that could possibly happen because you don't know who's behind that door Mm -hmm. i always tell people i don't know how many process servers i see it over and over that they go right to the front door they ring the doorbell and they're standing directly in front of it there's Mm -hmm. no way for you to know that there's not a gun on the other side of that door i never stand in front of the door that's a good one adjacent to the door i knock i ring who are you i say what i am but i never stand in front of the door because i just i don't take those kind of precautions you don't know someone's gonna open the door real quick and then they'll surprise and it's too late yeah it's too late yeah but people just don't expect that to happen to them i think a lot has to do with your manner and the way you talk to someone if you're aggressive with someone they're going to be aggressive with you i've had people where they're aggressive and i'm talking to them very calmly i'm so sorry this is happening i wish i didn't have to give it to you unfortunately this is my job Mm -hmm. you know if it's not me it's somebody else right you know call the number i hope it all works out for you if you act professional you're more than likely not going to have an encounter Mm -hmm. you know you always have those situations you also got to know your area what areas should you not be in at certain hours what areas will yeah. give you more problems than others you know i usually don't go into certain sections where i know there's gang areas or late at night you don't show up in the in the gang area at 11 o'clock at night when the crash units are floating in the neighborhood <laughs> and thinking that you're some kind of drug dealer in fact you're a process server yeah. so you just got to use common sense you got to know your vicinity in your area on where you should be at what hours and that way you can maximize your efforts at the same time so well mike that's good you know we we take the good with the bad and there's something that keeps us going with all this i've had a few bad experiences myself but i've also had i want to say i've had more good experiences than bad tell me about the greatest experience you've ever had in the field uh i've had a couple of them but one of them that comes to mind is where um a lady was getting all her money stolen from her and they needed to get this guy in an injunction and once he got served it would freeze all his assets and she had lost a lot of money and they i didn't get paid enough for it for all the work that we had to do but i had that personal feeling that I just felt so bad for what this man had done to this particular lady or this this client and I spent extra time I did some little stakeout I I did a lot of extra stuff just to get him served and she was so appreciative of it and uh, so that sticks in my mind I've had several I had several different ones that people were very appreciative or they felt bad that they had to that I had to come serve them like as and yet I'm giving them the bad news and they're trying they're telling me they're sorry you know, you'll get different situations. I think the toughest ones to serve, really, to be honest, is divorce papers, especially when the when one of them doesn't know that it's coming, and that's where it gets very hard. Yeah, I've once served a, a lady at a Taco Bell, and I I had just served three other papers before that one, and they were just routine, you know, collection cases. And then there's this Taco Bell lady, and I served her just like anybody else, and she passed out on the floor right there in Taco Bell. Uh, she didn't know she was getting divorced, and after that, that taught me to okay, look at the paperwork, <laughs> make sure you you know divorce cases you handle them a little more discreetly, a little more. You should always have discreet but with divorce especially so right and i think i think sometimes one of the the other rewarding ones when you serve celebrities oh yeah especially if it's someone you like (laughs) and then they're a a true gentleman yeah that those are the ones that really do it for you you know so i mean those are the ones that i really get excited about because i've served a lot of celebrities served danny devito danny devito and ria perlman we served them i come in the house and they want to offer me cookies and oh wow and the whole thing oh yeah they're really nice <laughs> that's people. so cool but then you'll get other people that are not very nice to sit down with right. which i'm not going to name who those yeah. are but <laughs> some of them are not the most nicest people they are exactly what you think they are that's so. funny that would that's a really cool experience yeah wow that but you lived down in that 
area, L.A. and Hollywood. and Yeah, it's you know. tough to serve in some of those areas, especially up in Hollywood Hills, and you get in the mansions, and they got the private estates and Beverly Hills, and you got the Beverly Hills Police Department. It's very protective of all the celebrities. They don't know if you're a uh, you know a groupie or you're a, a obsessed fan or you're the paparazzi. You, they, they have no <laughs> idea. So whenever I do stakeouts and those kind of things, I usually call the police department let them know, hey, I'm going to be sitting on the street. I'm waiting for so-and-so. Yeah. And it's always worked out pretty well that way. And they're pretty supportive of you. They are. That's as long cool. as they know you're there, then they won't hassle you. Nice. Well, Mike, you got a lot of things going on. And so I just want you to kind of focus on maybe one thing that has you most fired up right now. Uh, tell us about that. Okay. Uh, what I'm working on right now that I, that I think is, is, is going to be the, the future is e-filing. I'm big into e-filing. I'm promoting e-filing. Uh, I've got people using my software. And the other thing that we're cross uh, uh, promotion is when we're doing foreign deposition, out-of-state subpoenas. Those are the two big things. I think a lot of people focus on process serving. I started to focus on the auxiliary services that I can offer because one, there's a lot less of it, of people doing it, and that are an expert in that in those fields. So I decided that was a realm I was going to go. Plus, it usually pays a lot more than a regular process. Okay, so like for example we're we consider ourselves the expert in out-of-state deposition subpoenas in all 50 states we do lots of them every day they got different rules and regulations for every state you know what you can do in california you can't necessarily do in texas or arizona or whatever so we have all the prescribing rules and sometimes it's not even by the state it's by the county you can go to one county, they have a totally different rule than the rest of the state complies with. There's about 32 different states right now that have the Foreign Deposition Subpoena Act. And so we do quite a bit of those. And the other one that we do a lot of is e-filing. Obviously in California, we don't really do it out of state, but it's becoming more and more prevalent here in this state. It is, yeah. In California, as you know, and we do a lot of that. I think last month we e-filed just over 2,000, between 29 courts, I think. Wow. And so to keep to make it real to server nation, you guys got to know, you know, my local court, we have we have a few local courts here, right? And one of them went completely e-filing. So we still have attorneys sending us to do like courtesy copies and things like that. But as far as the e-filing goes, we're pretty much cut out of the loop. And so, I th- Mike, do you think it's important that, that if, you know, someone listening to this isn't involved in e-filing, tries to get involved in some way or? Well, I think, first of all, they should definitely get involved in e-filing. Second of all, I would say 75% of my e-filing business is concierge. 25% is done by the client, the other 75% is done by us. It's cheaper for them to pay it and have us doing it than having their secretary or the or the lawyer themselves spend all their time trying to data enter all the information. And if they do it wrong, then it gets rejected. Where we do it day in and day out, we know all the changes of the rules. We know what's missing. They find out. I have one that's dis- – kept on being fanatic about that they want to do it themselves they did it themselves they've got it rejected three four five times Mm. it cost them more than what Mm. they would have just had me do it then they finally did have me do it and now they decided they're going to have me do it from now on they don't even want to do it anymore let the professionals handle it sometimes you got to let the client fail for you to benefit right so in this particular case it's working out good and we market it we give clients options do it yourself this is the fee have us do it this is the fee you know they can decide it's basically just like you go to a restaurant you have a choice you want Want this steak it's this price you want the better steak it costs this price you make your decision which way you want it okay and that's how you have to treat it so that's good yeah e-filing i think a lot of people um i know myself when i went to cal's pro and they told me you know the sticker price of ten thousand dollars to be able to get set up with it it was like wow what kind of suggestions do you have for the for the little guy that wants to get involved well, you can connect, you can become a strategic partner with another company that offers e-filing without having to pay that kind of money. Then there's other companies that'll co-brand their portal to match your company thing. So other than the e-filing, what advice would you give to a struggling server out there that was just trying to trying to build his business? Well, I, I, I see a lot of servers, when they first become a server, they want to do it for the cheapest price so they can get the account. I tell people that price doesn't always dictate the service. You can do things cheap and then at the same time, I think, and then all of a sudden they have extraordinary measures or they want something done, they want it for that cheap price. You gotta charge a fair price to get a fair job done. What you wanna do is to say, this is the service I will offer. Just like when someone calls me up and says, I'm not happy with so-and-so, and I say, okay, what's the problem you're having? Then I don't downgrade that at process serving company. I say, okay, I'm sorry you had that problem, but this is what I would do, or this is how we would handle it, or 
these are the benefits of using my company or my process serving process service versus the competitor and I'll give you the comparison. And then they decide for themselves. I think it's unprofessional, very unprofessional when you hear another person, just so they get the account, they'll, they'll agree with the client and say whatever they have to say so they can get it. That is not a proper way. You know, you go in, you're you're energized. This is what we can do. Give me a try. Half off on that first service. Give me a try. See if you like me. You know? Yeah. You want to offer something benefit that you're going to do something more than what they're currently using. Otherwise, if you're going to just do the same, there's no benefit. It's now, true. There's people that are, there's three different ways a, a client is motivated. One is money. Sometimes they want to get the cheapest price in town. They don't care about quality. There's another one that'll pay whatever the, doesn't matter how much it costs. They just want service. And then there's a the person in the middle that, you get what you get for the price. It's middle of the road. If they get it great, they don't, great too. It all depends on the clientele. Mm. And you gotta know your clientele, what they expect. There's an old saying, inspect what you expect. Inspect what you expect. I expect you to, I paid you for a job, I expect you to do the job. Oh, that's if you're good... not, then you gotta make a change. I don't think we expected any less from uh, the great Mike Kern as far as uh, quotes go. We're gonna have to put that one on the show notes. Inspect <laughs> what you expect. That's great. That's right. You inspect what you expect. Inspect. So, okay, well, now it's time uh, for the rapid fire round is what we're calling this. And we are going to basically every question is just pretty much the first thing that comes to your mind. You can do a quick uh, two sentence deal and then we're moving on to the next one. We want to find out. It's a quick way to try to find out what makes Mike Kern tick. Server Nation, I know you believe in being trained. And our mid-roll sponsor is ProServerTraining.com. They have a free course. Check it out. Quizzes, online lectures, videos, and more. ProServerTraining.com. Okay, now we're back. The rapid fire round. Mike, if you could recommend just one app like Road Warrior, what would it be and why? The Waze app. Favorite app. W-A-Z-E. Best app in the market. It, it gives you alternate routes while you're driving. It tells you there's a traffic jam, lets you know, hey, take this other route. It's six minutes quicker. This one will save you 20 minutes. It'll tell you to get off the freeway, get back on. It'll tell you where there's police. Really? There's, other, there's, there's hundreds of, if not millions of people on the app. They'll let you know when they see a cop, they hit a little button, say there's a cop right here at this. Spot. Oh, my gosh. It'll tell you to <laughs> slow down. There's a cop ahead. Oh, my gosh. And then you hit the button. You hit the, you, you'll tap the button as, like a thumbs up, and it'll say, let them know that, hey, it's, it's he's still there and it'll let you know oh let my you know. gosh there's a red light they'll tell you where there's a photo light coming up i mean it's just it's a great app you can add stops you can you can route yourself off of it you can look for food places saying hey there's these six food places beats google by a landslide as far as i'm concerned mike what case tracking software would you recommend as the best i use currently tristar awesome and tristar has it'll do cross-serving court filing uh, investigations photocopy, writ levies, and we're not just talking about data enter part of it. I mean, it actually makes the packet. It'll make you the levy packets. It'll make you the photocopy packets, all the subpoenas. Uh, it has an online um, ordering tracking system. Client can load in, get their copy of their proof of service, their file documents, anything. Wow. It's it's all stored on the cloud, on the database. Place an order, check a status, request a status. It's just it's very interactive software, and it is now has the ability to do e-filing right through that same portal to all the Tyler courts throughout the state of California. What's your favorite skip tracing tip or trick? I'll tell you, my favorite skip tracing thing, which is free and it doesn't cost you anything, is Facebook. Best skip tracing trick all day. I'll bet you I use that at least 30% of everything I skip. So if I'm looking for someone, I look for them, I find them on Facebook, I know their region. It's amazing how people check in certain places. Oh, they constantly check in at this lunching place. Oh, I'm sure I can find them there. Mm-hmm. Or they have where they were employed right on there. Yeah. People are all about giving too much data or too much information. I'm I'm guilty of it right now, but I'm not hiding from no one. If somebody wants to find me, come find me. <laughs> but but I tell people if you if you're if you're a creditor and you and you want to find someone and you want to hire a skip tracer, that's the first place I hit. I go right to Facebook. I can pull up all kinds of stuff on people. Facebook is Facebook. great. Do you use any of the uh, any there's, of the special apps for it? Yeah. Well, I I mean I use several different softwares. Uh, I yeah. use um, TLO. I use tracers. I I have. Uh, 
I have access to credit bureaus. Um, I have DMV. I have access to a lot of different things. Of course, I also have an investigator license, so I have access to a little bit more than the average person. But there's a lot of things. You Just Googling somebody, mm-hmm. you can get information. That's true. You want to know how someone looks and you can Google Michael Curran on the thing, you'll pull me up and you'll pull a picture of me and how old I am. It'll come right up. That's and right. You didn't have to, it didn't cost you anything. That was free. Tell people, just use what's free first, and then you can go from there. You, there's a lot of other databases you can sign up for to get extra information, but there's a lot of stuff on the internet that is already free that didn't cost you nothing. I didn't mention it on here. I just asked about a tip or a trick, but uh, as far as databases go, TLO, I try. I think I've tried them all except for Clear, and TLO has been the best so far. I have IRB as well just because I feel like if I can't find it in TLO, sometimes I find it in IRBs. Right. Well, sometimes I'll run three, four, five different databases at once, and then I'll pull all the data and I'll look at, okay, which one's going to give me what I want? But I find TLO one of the best, and the other one is Tracers is pretty good. Oh, okay. You know, they'll give me good phone numbers good emails, um, good employment, certain ones. There's another one called Microbuilt, and they'll give you an employment searches. Oh, really? That That's a good one yeah. to look into. Micro. That's a real good one. Uh, that's been really beneficial. So you have to have some kind of contract with them to do it. So uh, what's your what's your favorite tool for defense, Mike? I'll tell you, the, 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 the cheapest and easiest tool is called a mag light. Carry it right <laughs> in my back pocket. You go walking around LA with a mag light? <laughs> I got a, I got a four, four cell mag light in my back pocket. I put it right in my back pocket. I come up to the door. Someone wants to grab me. I got it. It's metal. It's got, you know, it's got D batteries and it's heavy. (laughs) Let me tell you, somebody comes, they're going to get hit. So Mike, I'm curious, what do you do about dogs? Haven't had too much problem with dogs. Um, You know, if I see there's a dog situation, now there's people that use mace. There's a lot of different things. Uh, I've been attacked by a Rottweiler. Oh, wow. Uh, 30, 25 years ago, I was attacked by a Rottweiler and it actually got a hold of my arm and it ripped my arm wide open. I had to have 12 stitches put in my arm in my bicep. Oh, man. Because he got a hold of it. The neighbor, I mean, the neighbor saw the whole thing, was out watering the lawn, was on a Saturday afternoon. And then, and the owner, after I served him, told the dog to attack me. He oh, my gosh. He to attack me. And the neighbor saw it. And, oh, wow. and actually, uh, when the police came by, they took the dog because it cut, the dog actually got destroyed because it was considered vicious. Mm-hmm. And he got arrested. Well, my wife and I, we own dogs, and you just can't be uh, that irresponsible with the dog. But the dog had to be trained that way for the dog to take a command to, to attack. I mean, I tell my dog at home, I, I have a little uh, Pomeranian dog, and I tell it to go ahead and attack. I don't, I don't think he's going to hurt anybody. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, the difference. If you train a dog to, to attack someone and he says it on command and it attacked me, Mm-hmm. And it wasn't letting go. You oh, know, wow. so I mean, you got to be careful. I mean, I don't carry a mag light in the middle of the afternoon, so I could have swung <laughs> at it. You know, I only need it at night. So that's funny. Yeah, that's, I mean, dog attacks aren't funny, but yeah, that's how we deal with it is always interesting. What kind of book would you recommend? For a process server or yeah. a process server related? Yeah. Well, there's, one, there's one book I always have with me. It's called a Thomas Map Book. And I'll tell you why. Because sometimes GPS and the internet and your data is dead in certain areas, but I'll tell you what, the map book doesn't lie. <laughs> My son just recently had a problem with his phone, and uh, I said, okay, stop by and buy a Thomas map book. He goes, what's that? So I had to teach him how to use a Thomas map book. I have one in all my cars because you just never know. Because prior to a cell phone, prior to Google, prior to GPS, you had to use a map book. You got to be able to get around. That's the truth. So Prosser always has to have a map book. That's great. So, Mike, what's the greatest advice you've ever received? Well, I'll tell you one that was never go in anybody's house, no matter if it's a little old lady standing at the door behind the screen door. Never go in the house. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot emphasize that enough. Never go in the house. I was a young man. My father used to tell me never go in the house. I thought, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> What's the big deal? Granny came to the door. Well, you don't know who else she's in there with. Well, I had to serve her husband, and he was deranged. I went in the house, and when I went to say him serve it, hand on the papers, he goes, I'm getting my gun. Man literally jumped off the couch and started running to his bedroom. I couldn't get the screen door open. I actually kicked the broke their screen door, <laughs> threw the papers in the thing, and ran to my car out on the driveway. And the oh. man standing at the door with his gun. Oh, boy. So I learned right then and there, never go in the house, no matter what the person looks like, even if they tell you, if the person's disabled, bring them to the door, bring them in a wheelchair, 
I cannot go in the house. For new servers out there, they may not know this, but you know, if they're if they're disabled and you can see them and be able to right. communicate with them, you don't have to necessarily hand it to them. You can set it on the you know inside the room or hand it to someone else to hand to them. As long as you can communicate with them, that's the key. I've and it, and it's funny. It was just brought up yesterday. I served down. I'm down in Palm Springs on business this week, and I went to serve a notice of default. And they have to be served personally. I've already served the wife, but now the husband has to be served. Well, he's disabled. He's in a wheelchair. The lady says, I have power of attorney. I go, ma'am, you may have power of attorney, but you are not him. I have to serve him. She says, are you going to keep coming back? I said, I'm going to keep coming back. <laughs> You're going to have to bring him to the door so I can see him and give him the papers and we can be on our way. She says, well, he's not ready to come to the door right now. Okay. So I come back later that night. She goes, You're just going to keep him? I said, I told you before, I'm going to keep coming. <laughs> Finally, last night I served her. She brought him in a wheelchair and I served him at the door. So, you know, sometimes you have to serve that person personally. It's just the, what it is, is the job. Prior to substitute service, back in the 70s, there was no substitute service. There was only personal service. Today, I think pro service today take it to another dimension. They think because they go and serve a subpoena and it's for a doctor, for personal appearance, oh, I can accept. No, you can't. It has to be personally served. I don't care what they say. Personal service is personal service. And I have to constantly teach that to pro service. And believe it or not, you'll have it across the state with other affiliates and other pro servers they think because someone says they're authorized it's like you trying to serve me a subpoena oh mike's my mike's my rep he'll just take it just go serve him up up in northern california i mean it's just that's how ridiculous it is well we have a couple of doctor's offices that the doctor's never available and they say oh we're authorized and it's like okay well, yeah, i just seen him walk by with his coat you know can he just <laughs> wave at me and i'll call it personal service i always tell him okay well i guess we'll serve him at home what do you mean serve him at home i say yeah he's got his home address i'm gonna serve him at home tonight so you then his home address is going to be public record do you want me to serve him now at his business or do you want his home address public record oh that's a good um, one. Oh, let me tell the doctor and they come they sometimes they get really pissed about it because i don't appreciate the threat it wasn't a threat it's a promise i was going to come to your house and serve you there you don't want to be served here okay i'll serve you at home you huh. come home sometime <laughs> so sometimes you have to leverage i've even done that with lawyers i've called the lawyer where they're playing games i call them up you want to set an appointment that i can come serve you or do you want me to serve you at home your choice just tell me which way you want it. most attorneys don't want to have have any problem so they'll end up making it where they don't make a scene so they'll figure it out for you yeah we hope <laughs> so mike uh, the last official question we have for you tonight what would you do if you woke up one day and had no clients a smartphone a car and only $500, how would you start over? Well, it depends on my skill level. So since I'm really good at the uh, technology side of business and I'm good with Facebook and I'm good with all the different social media, that I probably would start something like uh, a podcast, a blog. Something would become kind of some kind of YouTube sensation for myself. There you go. <laughs> you know, it's kind of late. I can't do what I really want to do in life. So now at my age, it's time to, you know, take what's your skills that you have. Or I would be... Uh, John, become a person that would do social media as to how to optimize your websites or something like that because I'm into that stuff. I do it now. That would be my other skill level. Start a business making websites and designing them and doing that kind of stuff. That's awesome. So for the so for the new process server trying to build his business and all he has is five hundred dollars and he wants to go out. What, what's the first thing he should do? He's got to build a website. Most important, got to set up an email address. Another thing I always see processors do they always use Gmail. To me, I think that's the worst thing to do. First of all, you can go on GoDaddy or any of these domains buy a buy a name for your company, whatever you want to call it. X Y Z process. Okay. And then you get an email that's hooked with because you get a free emails. You get up to 10 free emails with it. Put it at Mike at XYZ Why would you want to market Gmail? I'd rather market my company. So uh, there's process serving companies out there that have been process servers and they don't know why they're not getting business. They don't have a website. So how's anybody going to know who you are? So the most inexpensive thing you can do is a website. And I'm not saying you have to spend $10,000. You can spend three, $400, build your own and have a website. It's and true. then when you start making money, you build another website. A website is the number one thing a prosumer has to have. Yeah. I always tell people, they say, where do you get most of your business? And I said, well, I, w I want to say they probably come in from Google and uh, they found my website and they clicked on my website. And I've made a point to make my website kind of a, you know, uh, a 
direction. So when they get to the main page, you know, if they want process service, you know, they can kind of pick it. And most of my clients, 90% of them are for service of process. So I've put my service request form right on the main page so they could just go and fill it out right away. I've seen your website. Your website's really nice. Uh, and wait till you see the new one we're building. Oh, we're building a new one. Can I have I'm the old building one? building a brand new <laughs> one right now. It's going to be really, it's going to be mind-blowing the next one. Oh, that's so cool. I'm supposed to launch that sometime around between now, end of September, early October. I also own over 400 domains. Oh, wow. I have, I have 41 websites. So you are so a website just, guru. Well, yeah. So what I do is, you know, a lot of people just market the one website. You should always have your your master website. But then I have a lot of domains that are popular. So I have a website just built for process serving. Doesn't talk about anything else but process serving. I have another website that talks only about writ levies. I have another one that talks about court filings. I got several websites that only talk about e-filing. Oh, e-filing wow. in Orange County, e-filing in San Francisco, e-filing in Fresno. And it's a website that's only dedicated to that county in that area. Yeah. SacramentoProcessServer.com, LosAngelesProcessServer.com. I have these websites for this cross-marketing. So you could go to a place on Google for a process server and I could clog the net with eight of the ten listings. But they may not say my company name on it anywhere. California processor, Los Angeles processor. But once you click into it, you find out it's my company. It directs you, redirects to your company. No, it's, it keeps their own website. It oh. just, it's just got my company name and logo on those websites, but it's a total separate website. The domain is that domain. It doesn't say my company name. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's awesome, and Mike. The, and then the ones that we don't have websites to, we have it backfeed to certain pages, depending on what the keywords that we're using. That's you awesome. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars on Google. Trust me, you don't. It's all about organic ranking, content, and blogs. Yeah, Mike, one thing one thing I did that might be helpful to Server Nation is when I first started, I found this article that talked about 50 different free business listing websites. And mm-hmm. so I went on and put my name in all of those. What I was told is it builds your Google relevancy and it takes your name, your address, and your phone number. And since it's found together in so many different places that it adds to your relevancy. It seemed to have helped me because I, got, I was at the front page of Google right after. Right, so like I just built a brand new website i we have a place that we can upload and it goes to 900 different search engines instantly it is kind of expensive though (laughs) it is if you're getting a return on your investment it's worth the money yeah you have to spend money to make money that's right that's right well mike i appreciate you staying up late with me here today and getting this uh first episode out of the way you know what you've really rocked us dropped some major value bombs i'm sure that the audience is going to be happy to listen to it and re-listen to it and we're going to share it and we're going to blast this thing across the country and try to get as many people listenership as we can mike what is the best way that we can connect with you and then we'll say goodbye okay well I'm, I'm the owner of Direct Legal Support in Los Angeles. We have four offices throughout the state of California. You can reach me by email at media at directlegal.com. You can visit our website at www.directlegal.com. I can be reached any way, different shape or form. You can call us at our 800 number, 800-675-5376. Mike, I just want to thank you for coming on the show and dropping some major value bombs on our audience. Server Nation, check out our website at processserverdaily.com. Check out Mike, ask him any questions. He's been a wealth of knowledge for me and my business here at 530 Process Servers in Chico, California. You can reach us on the web at 530.legal and you can check out all these episodes for Process Server Daily on our website at processserverdaily.com. Dot com. And until next time, you've been served by the podcast server.